Hello and welcome. This is Kate Marin from the Department of Small and Local Business Development's Innovation and Equitable Development Division. We are very excited to be running a series this year with the Department of Energy and the Environment, um, helping DC small businesses learn all about the many wonderful things that DC overall, and specifically the Department of Energy and the Environment, are doing um, to help make DC a, a standard bearer in um, sustainability and clean energy. And as part of that, and a part of sustainability is all about supporting all of our residents in different ways. And to that end, I wanna make sure that I um, introduce our presenter for today. Uh, this is Kenley Farmer, and she's gonna to talk to us about the uh, Utility Affordability Administration. Kenley, why don't you take it away? Thank you, and thank you for uh, allowing us to present today. We're really excited to join this effort. Uh, so I'm Kenley Farmer, the Deputy Director for the Utility Affordability Administration uh, with the Department of Energy and Environment. Um, if you have not heard of this administration, you're not alone because it was only um, formulated within the past year. So it was part of a realignment to expand our efforts um, to ensure that as we strive to reach our climate goals in the district, uh, that we're not leaving anyone behind. So the goal for today is just to walk everyone through um, the programs that are within this administration um, and hopefully um, you all can learn something. I'm happy to uh, take questions as well. Uh, so the utility affordability, excuse me, affordability administration is made up of two divisions. Uh, the first is the residential services division. Um, so you can think of this division as housing many of the traditional programs that have been tied to energy efficiency, such as the Department of Energy's weatherization assistance program. Um, but we've been working to expand the efforts of this division. Um, so whereas we used to go in and, and only kind of do energy efficiency, efficiency. Um, now we're trying to tie in um, expanded efforts related to healthy homes. We also have an emergency um, mechanical system program. Um, so if you have a furnace or air conditioner that is no longer functional or a um, hot water heater and you qualify under our income guidelines, you could receive assistance. Um, and then in addition, we've recently taken on um, expanded efforts to address lead hazards in the district. Um, so this is made up of two components. Uh, the first is the lead hazard reduction program, uh, which is funded by HUD, um, as well as additional American rescue plan funds. And then the second one is our lead pipe replacement assistance program. Um, so as um, many jurisdictions in the country that have um, aging infrastructure, a lot of that, uh, those pipes were made out of lead. So um, we're working in partnership with DC Water to remove all lead pipes. Um, the goal is by 2030. Um, then the second division is made up of programs that help directly with your utility bills. Uh, so the first branch is the energy affordability branch, which includes the low income home energy assistance program, as well as utility discount programs. So ongoing discounts on your utility bills. And then separately, we have a new uh, branch that's the water affordability branch. Um, so uh, recently, I think a lot of us have seen the rising cost of um, household water. Um, and so in tandem with that, we've also seen new federal programs that have been put in place to assist with water costs. Um, the key one being the low income household water assistance program. Um, currently that only provides a, a certain level of emergency relief. Um, we'll have to see what Congress does um, if they determine to make this a more permanent ongoing program. And then the second part of this is the clean rivers impervious area charge residential relief program. Um, so in the district be, due to um, you know, stormwater runoff is a major concern. Um, so in order to pay for a lot of the infrastructure upgrades that were needed in the district to prevent stormwater runoff, um, a, a fee was imposed on all district water bills. So this program was put in place to assist low income residents with their uh, CREAC fee. So I just covered a, a, a number of these programs, but here you can see them kind of laid out. Uh, so low income home energy assistance, that's direct uh, assistance towards your Pepco, Washington Gas, or household um, fuel oil bill. A utility discount program is the ongoing discounts on your bills. So whereas the first program is actual credits, the utility discount program is an ongoing discount. 
And then the new water assistance programs that I mentioned. Uh, after that, we have our weatherization assistance program um, tied to energy efficiency, emergency HVAC, and then again, our lead pipe replacement and lead and mold reduction. That last one, the lead and mold reduction program is new. Um, this is part of our expanded efforts to do a whole house approach. So if we're going into a home to look at energy efficiency, now we can go in and say, are there other factors in place such as lead and mold? And this program came about um, through the American Rescue Plan funds that were authorized last year. So a little more detail on LIHEAP. Um, so as I mentioned, it allows you to pay, um, we provide assistance towards electric gas and home heating oil bills. Um, uh, benefits may be up to $1,800. Um, and they're determined based on your home heating source, uh, the number of people in your home and your type of homes, whether it be a single family or apartment building. Um, we also offer a separate emergency benefit. So during uh, the pandemic, we revised our emergency policy. It used to be that you had to have a disconnection notice or you were actually disconnected from service. But during the pandemic, clearly the utilities weren't disconnecting. So we revised our policy to state um, if you owe $250 or more, then you could receive a benefit of up to $750. And then, as I mentioned, we also have the utility discount program. This is done in partnership with all of our utilities. So Pepco, Washington Gas, DC Water, um, and this provides your ongoing discount on your bills. And if you'd like to apply, um, you can do so on our website. So doee.dc.gov slash LIHEAP. Um, you can also uh, print out our application if you prefer to mail it in to us. Um, so right now, we're not taking in-person uh, applications, but you are able to apply online and via the mail. So again, the weatherization assistance program, this is a long-standing program that um, I think everybody is, has at least heard of. Um, weatherization measures may include insulation, duct sealing, um, heating and cooling system repairs or replacement, um, air infiltration mitigation, and then upgrading um, appliances to energy star rated appliances to further reduce your energy costs. Um, that also may include lighting. So if you are interested in this program, please visit our website again, um, or you can call our residential services hotline, so 202-299-3316, and we will be happy to um, provide you with more information. And again, this is our emergency mechanical system program. So typically this program uh, runs out of funding at some point during the winter, but due to the expanded um, American Rescue Plan funds, we have been able to keep this program open year round for the last year, um, which has meant that we're not only assisting households with their heating needs, but also their cooling needs in the summer. Um, and with people you know, spending much more time at home during the pandemic, um, we think this was an important resource so that people could be comfortable in their homes. Um, same phone number as the last program. So again, our residential services hotline, so 202-299-3316. Um, the other item that can be replaced under this program is if you have a non-functioning uh, hot water heater. Uh, so heating, cooling, and hot water. Next, we have our lead reduction program. So this is also new within the last couple of years um, and was made available through a grant that we applied for um, with the US Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, so we have funding now to address lead hazards within low income households. Um, so the requirements are the house must have been built before 1978. Um, the, this next step that you see here, funds will be expended based on lead inspection risk assessment. That lead inspection risk assessment is an assessor will come into your home and identify potential lead hazards. And once they conduct that ass assessment, that determines what actual work will be completed in the home. Um, and so then we will do the actual lead based paint remediation. Um, which may include enclosure, replacement, encapsulation. Um, we'll also look at other necessary repairs, such as roof repairs, water leaks, um, other issues around flooring and doors um, and windows, which are often some of the primary sources of chipping lead paint. So again, uh, 299-3316, or you can email us at leadpaint.reduction at dc.gov. 
Um, one thing we've been trying to work on across the scope of all of these programs is to make it very simple to apply. Um, so if you are looking to apply to one of these residential services programs, so whether it be the weatherization, emergency mechanical systems, um, lead reduction, you can now fill out a seamless application. So when you start to fill out these fields, um, other fields will auto populate for you to try to reduce um, the amount of time it takes to complete this paperwork. Um, so you can find this application on our website, but again, um, we are here and happy to help. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call us. Then the other program that I mentioned is the lead pipe replacement assistance program. So this one is also new to us since 2019 um, when council passed legislation that meant that um, you, like when service lines are replaced, the entire service line needs to be replaced. So what was happening in the past, um, you can see on the left side of the screen, we have a lead pipe on the public space, a lead pipe on the private space going to the point of entry in the home. When DC water would go through and replace um, service lines, they would only replace the service line on the public side, which meant that we now had non lead meeting with lead. Um, and that has been found to have uh, detrimental health impacts. So, moving forward, there's now an assistance program. Um, if, if you have 1 of these partial lead service lines, um, so you can either um, opt to qualify for our income based assistance, which means up to 100% of the cost could be covered. Or if you opt not to go through the income based program, then 50% of your costs will be covered up to a certain amount. So, if you have any questions on this, um, 1 thing I will mention is if you go to DC waters website, um, you can see what the material is that's um, running into your home. So every single address in the district is mapped. Um, and so if you're not sure what the material is for your home in particular, I definitely recommend looking it up on the DC water map. And then if you have other questions, you can call us at 311 or email us at ladline.replacement at dc.gov. And as I mentioned, there is no income limit for this program, but if you're seeking 100% of assistance, then you would need to be income qualified. Um, next, we have our low income home water assistance program. So this one is new and these funds were made available through both the Consolidated Appropriations Act as well as the American Rescue Plan. Um, and so eligible households receive a one time water assistance benefit as the equivalent of 25% of their annual water bill. And we determine that based on data received from DC water. Um, in addition, we may also um, provide emergency water assistance subject to available funding. So this means that you could receive a total benefit of up to $5,000 per fiscal year. Um, I will say that the funding for this program has been limited and we have already dispersed a large amount of it. Um, to existing um, households that have been income qualified. So I definitely recommend applying as soon as possible if you need assistance with your DC water bill. Um, you can find more information on this on our website. Um, we have a dedicated water affordability hotline. So that's 350-9649. You can also email us at waterassistance at dc.gov. Then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, another program that came about a couple of years ago is the Clean Rivers Impervious Area Charge Relief Programs. Um, so, as I mentioned, the Clean Rivers Impervious Area Charge is the charge that was imposed to cover the cost of some large-scale stormwater projects in the district. So, you may have heard of the um, large pipe that was completed, uh, I guess, a couple of years ago now that has resulted in a significant reduction in runoff into the Anacostia. So again, this ties into our larger environmental goals of having clean, swimmable rivers in the district. But in order to complete that work, unfortunately, it, it does come at a cost. So to mitigate the burden of those costs on our low and moderate income residents, uh, this program was created. So. Uh, the, the cap 1 tier is at 60% SMI, um, so state median income, cap 2 is at 80% area median income, and cap 3 is at 100% area median income. 
So if you think you may qualify for one of these tiers, you can look on our website and see what the household income requirements are um, according to the number of people in your household. Um, there's also a separate program to assist eligible nonprofits. Um, so if you are a church and you have a large um, paved area, you've probably seen these impervious area charges. Um, so I definitely recommend looking into our nonprofit assistance program. So again, more information on this can be found on our water affordability page. Uh, you can call the hotline and also email us at waterassistance at dc.gov. Um, this chart just shows you kind of across the board the income scale um, for our program. So um, you can see that the majority of the programs, if you are under 60% of state median income, which for a household of four is around $82,000, then you would qualify for every program that's been covered today. Um, once you get up to the 80% area median income scale, um, you are still eligible for the utility discount program, the CREAC, assistance program, as well as the lead pipe replacement assistance program. And then finally, the um, CREAC assistance program also goes up to that 100% AMI level and the lead pipe replacement assistance program also has a non income qualified option. So that is it in terms of covering the programs within the Utility Affordability Administration. Um, I thank everybody so much for your time and um, I'm happy to address any questions or, or cover anything else that, that we think might be helpful. Kenley, thank you so much. I, I know um, a question is coming in the chat and I know I have a question. I do wanna encourage everyone who's on the line, um, You know, we'll have some additional time for, for Q&A, so please be thinking of those, dropping them in the chat. Um, you might have answered this later in the presentation, but um, when we were first talking about the weatherization assistance program, um, there were questions specifically about the income limitations um, or restrictions that might apply to the weatherization assistance programs. Okay, sure, yeah, so for the weatherization assistance program, um, so you can see here, for, it's that, it, and apologies for the acronym SOUP. So it is the WAP. So it's typically 60% state median income, um, but this one is asterisk. So um, you may be ca categorically eligible if you receive social security income or uh, temporary assistance for needy families. So my recommendation would be is if you're not sure um, to please call us. Um, we've also been working to try to use some of our expanded um, American Rescue Plan funds to get us up to that 80% area median income level for energy efficiency services. So I would suggest going ahead and applying and reaching out to us to see if, if you qualify. Thank you for that. And then my, my next question, and this is a question that I have, um, is, is sort of around um, small business participation in any of the, the work that you're doing, it does sound like a lot of the funds that you receive are, are federal funds that are then um, translated to DC residents. Are there pieces of work here that um, do have either small business participation directly with what you're doing, maybe as CBEs or otherwise, or are there other ways that business owners um, can think about using this information um, in, in the course of their business that, that are immediately obvious to you? Sure. So, I mean, one of our um, kind of biggest contingents in terms of small businesses is HVAC contractors or um, other contractors that do household work. Um, so each year we issue grants to two, it's currently two sub grantees. So the first is Greater Washington Urban League. The second is Fry Heating and Plumbing Nonprofit. Um, but they are mandated to um, go about a competitive process to bring in uh, the contractors that conduct the weatherization work. And we do always encourage that those contractors be um, CBEs, local district businesses. Um, so I definitely encourage all of the um, small businesses that, that are kind of tied into residential work or HVAC that are interested to keep an eye out on that because we definitely want to ensure um, a high level of competition and that you know these funds are going to local district businesses. Um. If someone was looking to find out more information on that, would they go to one of your websites or, or call or email or would they reach out to those groups directly? What's the, the best way for someone to get into that information flow? Yeah, I would suggest um, we do, we have a, a kickoff meeting at the beginning of every year um, related to this program. So I, I would suggest 
actually, um, I think we have the email address. You could email the leadpaint.reduction at dc.gov. Um, and then we can be sure that any contractor that's interested in participating is involved in that kickoff meeting where they are introduced to uh, our sub grantees and that and can participate in that competitive process. That is that is fantastic. Um, thank you for sharing that information. Um, I would do want to check and see if other folks on the line have have questions. Are there any additional ones? Um, and I think. I think as we wait to see if there are any other questions, uh, another question that I have, um, you know, when we start thinking about, you know, these, these programs are wonderful. They're helpful. I know you mentioned a couple of times that in some of these programs funds funds do run out. Um, is that always on sort of the same cycle or are there sort of different cycles? Like, do they all start at a certain amount of time and then go until, or do they start at different times? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So in the district, our fiscal year starts on October 1st. So that's usually when our new slate of funding comes in. Um, the one I mentioned in particular was the um, emergency heating program, so that HVAC program. We often will run out of funding for that program as early as January. Um, we do our best to try to keep it funded at least through the, the coldest parts of the year, um, but that can sometimes be difficult. Um, so far, you know, since Mayor Bowser has been in office, um, Mayor Bowser has been very dedicated to making sure that our utility assistance program has been fully funded. So we have not had to close those doors um, during her administration, which has been great because it means that um, in previous eras where the funding would run out, then you have people who can't receive assistance during the course of the summer and are waiting for that October 1 date to roll back around. Um, so, I, I will say too, the increase in federal resources and COVID relief, I think, has also done a, a great deal to ensure that we can continue to um, get these funds out the door. Where DOE is monitoring all of our federal resources to make sure that they're, you know, all dispersed while at the same time trying to ensure that we have um, a, additional funding available for when utilities begin to disconnect again. Um, We've all seen that there are the cost of energy is increasing right now. So both electricity and gas. So we're trying to monitor all those factors to make sure that we can continue to keep our doors open. Even virtually. That is wonderful. And we have another question come in the chat um, and, and I think it's an interesting 1 about home based businesses um, home based businesses that are. Um, that's utilizing some of these utilities and, and someone is asking, you know, can they separate out the business from the home and get assistance on the home because they, they still qualify, but they recognize that the, the business use, even though it's the same like faucet, like this is power washing, um, you know, that there are separate uses. Do you, do you know how that would work? If we can look into it, um, it, it may depend. We do allow um, for our utility assistance program. Um, if you are self-employed, we have a pathway um, to determine if you are eligible via your self-employment. So we look at your um, tax return. If you, you know, I think there are some houses in the district where they may have like a basement unit that may be separately metered from the residential section of the home. So we can take a look at that. Um, but we do try to take that into account. I mean, we consider our um, job to be both as public servants, but here to assist people that need it. So if, if that's the case, then, then we can try to figure that out. And, and that also makes me wonder uh, with the different programs, it seems like some of them may be more suited to homeowners versus renters, but are they all available to both homeowners and renters? They are. So um, a good example is our weatherization program. So if the renter is income eligible, um, but they're living in, let's say, a single family row home, um, they have a landlord, then we just need the landlord's permission to conduct the work. Um, so we do, and, and for our water assistance program, that's, that's very common that, um, you know, even the water bill may be in the landlord's name. So then we just need proof that the tenant is responsible for the water bill itself, which is usually included in the language of the lease. Um, so we try to be very cognizant of the number of renters that there are in the district and make sure that there's pathways for them to receive assistance. I'll mention too, um, one program that is not 
listed here um, is DC Water also has a separate multifamily assistance program. So if you are a tenant living in a master meter building, or maybe you work with a third party servicer like ConService or Studebaker, um, DC Water has a separate program to assist you um, outside of if you directly pay your DC Water bill. Um, and I think I just have um, two two more questions, and then and then we'll wrap up because I know we want to want to stay on time. Um, I I know it's a different set of supports, um, but I, I know that DOE is working very closely with the DC Sustainable Energy Utility. Are there ways that that you'd highly recommend that people you know if they're taking advantage of the supports through where you are, where they would obviously look to DCSEU and other programs for other ways to be saving on costs? Some of the ways that people would explore that. Yeah, I would definitely recommend looking at um, DCSU's website. You can get, um, you know, I think they still offer great deals on things like LED light bulbs. Um, so uh, my suggestion is to look into both. But if you if you're trying to differentiate between the DCSU and these programs, the main difference is that ours are federally funded. Um, so it can mean that there are stricter requirements, whereas DCSU is able to, you know, address even buildings in the commercial space or kind of more, more broadly that uh, commercial and industrial space. So, um, whereas we really are targeted towards low and moderate income residents in the district, and especially with these expanded services, um, now we're, we're especially looking for households with young children that may have the risk of exposure to lead hazards. Um, so, you know, that's something that DCSU does not address. Um, so, if you know anyone who, you know, uh, has experienced an elevated blood lead level, you know, that's something we, we really want to try to prevent going forward. Um, so, we're happy to take those referrals and, and try to address those issues. Well, thank you so much. My my last question, and, and if anyone still has a question, please uh, put it in the chat or, or raise your hand. We want to make sure that, that we answer those. But but this, I think, is a question just about how to reach out if you forget all the details. Um, so, you know, I think there are a huge number of wonderful programs, both the ones that you're talking about here, but also additional ones at DOEE. And if someone just remembers, DOEE maybe had a program for that. Mm -hmm. How would you best suggest that they reach out to to try to find that and try to get assistance? What's the what's the one best way to remember outreach if if you don't remember the details? Number one um, is three one one. Three one one has you know they actually have access to a number of our systems. They can look up you know if if you have been approved for utility assistance. Um, they have our call flow to kind of get you to the person that you need to talk to for any one of these programs. Um, but you can also see my contact information here. So if you have any difficulty or have any questions, feel free to reach out to me as well. Thank you so much. Any any close up thoughts and, and then we'll be done. No, just thank you so much for this opportunity. We're really happy to be able to share this, especially um, considering we're newly formed. So it's um, I really appreciate the the time to to uh, share this with everyone. So thank you. Well, thank you so much. Um, this is one of what we hope are, it's been, we've had a few DOE sessions already. We have a few more coming. Um, all of the wonderful things that are happening at the Department of Energy and the Environment to support DC residents and DC small businesses. I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording. Thanks everybody for being here.